Hello, Faith Congregation. Uh, welcome to uh, my weekly vlog. It's one of the ways that I'm trying to stay connected, one of the ways we can stay connected during this time of lockdown and social distancing. This week, I really want to follow up on the message uh, that we had on Sunday uh, concerning or entitled Growing Through Spiritual Pathways. Now, in that me message, I highlighted various ways that we can love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And I, again, I want to highly recommend Gary Thomas's book, Sacred Pathways, because in that book, he highlights nine different ways in which believers down through the centuries have drawn close to God, experienced the presence and power of God in their lives. And so my purpose in this log is to sort of personalize that message by sharing some of my own personal pathways with you. And then I want to highlight one more additional pathway that we didn't have time for on Sunday morning. Again, my hope is that you will be able to identify your particular pathways and then lean into them. And then also that you will learn to appreciate the other pathways as well. So first, I want to highlight some of the pathways that I travel down with some regularity that help me to draw close to God. The first one is the enthusiast pathway. Uh, for me, having the freedom, having the opportunity to pour out my heart in worship and praise and in prayer with other believers, experiencing dynamic, energetic times of worship and praise is very meaningful and powerful for me. Now, passionate worship can be loud, but it can also be soft, but it comes from the heart. And so praise and worship that style and that type of music and worship feeds my soul. It lifts my spirit and it draws me close to God. A second pathway that I regularly go down is the naturalist pathway. I love to be in nature, to be in God's outdoor sanctuary, surrounded by his creation. Psalm 19 says that the heavens declare the glory of God. And so when I'm out in nature, I see God's creation declaring his glory and his majesty. So for me, you know, hiking through the mountains or kayaking down a river or biking along an old railroad trail or even just taking a walk through the woods, listening to my playlist uh, of praise and worship music. When I'm in those places doing those things, it, it's, it's a uh, transformational, you know, uh, almost heavenly experience for me. It's there I see and I feel the presence, the power, the majesty, the glory of God. A third pathway that I often travel down is the activist pathway. I feel most spiritually alive when I am busy building God's kingdom. Now, as I mentioned in the message, activists tend to uh, have a sense of urgency about God's mission, and they tend to be intense about moving God's kingdom forward. They focus on justice issues and, and uh, effectiveness things. And so as a result, they often serve as social, at least in my case, as uh, church reformers. Now, here's kind of how it works for me as I've reflected on this over the years. When I take on a challenge, I sense God calling me and I take on a challenge that is far greater than I am, far more than any of the resources I have. It creates a sense of dependency upon God that would not be there if everything was easy and comfortable. And so it causes me to fall down on my knees and to cry out, Lord, you know, help me. Lord, I need you. I desperately need you. If you don't show up, we're done. I feel most spiritually alive when I'm out on a limb for God, when I'm taking risks and taking on a huge challenge, but trusting him for the victory. That's what stretches my faith, draws me close to God, and keeps me close to him. So those are some of the natural pathways for me. You might have other ones as well that work for you. 
One final spiritual pathway that we didn't have time to mention on Sunday is the traditionalist pathway. Now, as you might guess, this pathway utilizes ancient rites, rituals, and symbols to draw close to God. For the traditionalist, singing new songs and engaging in new forms of worship uh, is difficult and oftentimes unsatisfying. It leaves them feeling a bit empty and hollow. But instead, they are enriched by songs and by prayers of the past. Regular religious routines and traditional rituals feed their soul. It connects them with the faith of their fathers and their forefathers. It reminds them of the God who is the ancient of days. Traditionalists love structure and stability and the deep rootedness of historic forms and elements of worship. Those are the things that enrich them and feed them. Those things have stood the test of time and have great value for them. It's these elements that draw them close to God. Again, my hope through this little dive into the spiritual pathways is that it's been insightful and beneficial for you. So until next time, be safe and be blessed.